I'm very anxious about telling you my experience for the last 10 days. I can feel it in my chest. There's a part of the last 10 days which will now be my fourth time telling. And when I got to that stage in the 10 day course, I was crying, um, totally depressed. And that's not an emotion that is familiar to me anymore. I think that by going through this course, every single person I spoke to managed to reach some sort of depth with themselves that none of us anticipated. And right now I want to relate this story to you. Why I ended up crying with tears of depression and a couple of days earlier, tears of joy. And exactly what this course is all about. It's very strict. The setup is that you are meditating for 10 hours every day. There's a, a very delineated schedule. You start at 4 a.m. in the morning and the meditation begins for two hours. After this, you have breakfast and a short break. Then you meditate again. And it kind of continues in this pattern from meditation to rest or eating and to meditation for the whole day until you've completed your 10 hours of meditation. In between, there's a lot of time to think. And every day, you are building upon the technique of the last day. The whole thing takes place in total silence and also the sexes are separated, we're segregated. There's a male section and a female section. And that also creates a strange environment. There were times when I was walking around and I felt like I was in a mental asylum. People were walking around with no shoes on, on the grass, holding an umbrella. There were a couple of strange moments where, for example, we had 20 of us all stood together just watching the sunrise all around us. We just had a sense of unity, even though I hadn't spoken to any of them before. I think the best way for me to go into this is just to describe the process day by day. And you'll see how wild this whole experience was for me. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking in a weird way right now because I'm maintaining a, a hold on the anxiety that is threatening to break out of my chest right now because I know I'm going to relate to you an experience which is very painful for me. The first day we went in and it was kind of what I expected to get out of a meditation center. We sat down and the instructions were to close your mouth and follow the breath through your nose in and out. That was it. We did that for 10 hours that day. Slowly you notice your focus improving and the aim is to be able to do that for 60 seconds. Focus on your breath interrupted inter without interruption for 60 seconds. And actually you find that thoughts are constantly coming to your mind. At first it's every couple of seconds. A, a thought will come to your mind and you'll get taken away with it. And I think this is the kind of meditation that most people come to at first, or at least how they see meditation. On this day, I had actually just recovered from some severe back pain. This back pain was really bad I had had a journey to the capital city of Ella where we'd had to stop maybe 10 times throughout the journey because as I was driving I was getting pangs of pain through my back and it was making it impossible for me to sit. I thought that I'd got rid of this pain through like some massage with a massage gun and Ella's help massaging my back. But it started to come back on the first day whenever I was sitting through the meditation I would get intense pain and I was able to cope with it by shifting my posture or by doing stretches like this and it continued that way all day. It didn't really improve, it kept getting worse throughout the day and at the end of the day I was doing some quite intense self-massage with my own hands and trying to get rid of muscle knots in the area. The second day I woke up in far more pain and I was already starting to worry about whether 
I was going to be able to continue with the course, but I kept at it. The 10 days on this day, we were focusing on the sensation when you breathe in and out of your nose. So the feeling of the air on your nostrils, you start to notice that when you breathe out, the air comes out warmer than it comes in. And it's hard to relate to you the experience of only focusing on that sensation for 10 hours in a day. It's a bit trance-like and you start to notice the, the tremor of the sensation, the pitch of it is increasing. You can feel it more strongly. And so I continued, I was always changing posture and stuff. My back pain was getting worse and worse. Actually in rest times now, I had taken apart my toothbrush and I was using the hard end of the toothbrush to massage my back because it was so painful, so bad. I was starting to worry that I was affecting other students because we're all sat in a meditation hall together. And during meditation, I'm like doing stretches and stuff and being distracting. But ultimately, I managed to get through it and continue. I got to the end of the day and was again wondering whether I could finish this course. Day three, woke up in even more pain. My back was really stiff, like a board. And I had to just grit through it. It really was changing position all the time, doing lots of self-massage while I was meditating to be able to sit through these hour or sometimes two hour sessions. In some of the sessions, you don't have to be in a meditation hall, you can go down to your room. So I was doing that quite a lot where I could lean against the wall um, in my bed and just get some sort of respite from that. But really there wasn't any position now I could be in where my back wasn't in total agony. The reason I'm telling you this in such detail is because this was about to change and it changed in a kind of remarkable way. The third day, the technique now moves. Instead of the breath and you focusing on in and out of your nostrils, you focus on this triangle area. Or I did, apparently it's supposed to be this area here. But I was focusing on just this. And if you try now, you close your eyes and you try and focus on this area, you'll probably notice that you can't really feel anything. That's going to be the experience for most people. But after you've trained yourself to be aware of the in and out passing of the air past your nostrils, you realize that actually you can feel something there. Maybe it's a touch of sweat, maybe it's the temperature of that area, maybe it's a slight humming or vibrating sensation. There's something there. And as you sit with that for 10 hours, the awareness of that feeling increases and increases and increases and increases. And you can just sit with the sensation there. And it's quite a strange experience because you've probably never, without touching it, been able to recognize that there's anything going on there. And as you continue in the course, this feeling increases. So day three, I'm again considering quitting, but I think the end of day three, considering quitting, but I think the next morning I'm just gonna wake up, see how I feel, and that will be that. I will try and just make the best of it and see where I end up through that. So I did, I got up in the morning, the pain was worse, kind of a repetition of what was happening before. By now I was massaging myself by laying on the bed with the toothbrush pushed against me and really getting deep into the muscle knots. I could feel that if I could get deep enough into the muscle knots, they start off really, really hard. If you've ever experienced muscle knots before, you'll know what I'm talking about. They start off hard and then eventually if you hold them and you grit through the pain, they start to dissolve away. And that was the feeling I was going for because that was relieving the pain for me and allowing me to sit. So I was doing that a lot and in a lot of pain. Um, and I started to feel like I was reliving the episode with my arms. And I don't know if you've watched my 10 years film before where I talked about that, but basically over six months I developed a kind of disease called tension myositis syndrome, where every second of every, well not every second of every day, that's an exaggeration, but 
all throughout the day, I was experiencing pain throughout my arms. And over the course of 12 months, it got so bad that I had to move in with my parents. I could no longer drive. I couldn't pick up like a bottle of milk. I couldn't cut my food up myself. My parents were doing that for me. I can change the channel on a TV remote because the action of pressing the button was sending mind-numbing pain up my arms. I couldn't speak to other people because the force of the pain was so strong and overwhelming that all I could think about was the pain. I couldn't have a conversation sometimes. I got through this through a practice of a guy called Dr. Sano. He wrote a book about it. Um, he had been solving chronic pain for different people um, and lots of different types of chronic pain with a series of ideas and theories based on his experience. It's all theory. Um, but essentially there was a phrase I was telling myself which was that the pain isn't in my head, the pain exists, it's there, but there's no problem with my arm. And eventually through that process, I was able to come out of it. And this ties into what was happening with my back because on the fourth day, we started moving up and down the body. So we weren't just focusing on this area. We started to expand that scope. From the top of the head, we worked in blocks. And you start to realize that all over your body, you can feel sensations. You can feel something happening. Maybe it's a clamminess, maybe it's the touch of the air, the atmosphere, but you can feel something if you stay for long enough and you have enough focus. By this point, our focus is so pin sharp, so precise, that we can just move through the body and feel stuff throughout the body. It's hard to describe without experiencing it properly because it's kind of unimaginable that there's that much sensation happening all the time. At the end of day four, I was on the verge of quitting still. But day five, um, I said to myself, I'll give it one more go. And so I did. On the morning of day five, they announced that we were having these sits of determination, which means for three times throughout the day, you must sit for one hour without leaving the hall and you must try to not change your position. And so I thought, that's it. I'm, I'm done, I'm over, there's no way I can do this. My back is torturing me, I'm in total anguish. But I went outside and they had a notice board every day and they changed it occasionally. And today on the notice board, it had some advice for the sis. It said, if you can't sit for a full hour, fine. Sit and see how many times you change your posture. Maybe it's four times, maybe it's five times. The next time you sit for an hour, try and reduce that number. If you sit for five times the first time, try and sit for four times the next time. And so I thought, okay, yep, last chance, this is what I do. And so I sit for the first hour, I don't know how many times I changed, but I started to notice something strange. Um, and this time the technique was slightly different as well. So when we get to the bottom of our bodies, we'd also come up from toe to head. So that was the only change in the technique. But I started to notice something. Every time we are feeling a sensation, our teacher, who is Mr. Goenka, um, he lived in India and Burma before, and he's kind of the one who brought this technique to the modern world. His voice is playing because he's not with us anymore and his teachings kind of have lived on. Um, his voice was playing and it's telling you how to deal with the sensations. The sensations come in different varieties, as I've already said, but not only are there like the actual feelings of the sensations, there's the kind of shape and the, there's some that are large and kind of blocky. And you realize that sometimes you can feel smaller sensations that are subtle and you are able to feel something more than just a block or a blind or a dead spot. And he says that the only way to break these down is to remain completely at peace, completely equanim equanimous. <laughs> it's not a word I've heard before, but basically it means without diversion, aversion, without aversion, without craving, 
without either of those things, your mind has to be totally level and at peace. And only then will you be able to feel the more subtle sensations because it will mean you have a harmonious and balanced mind. And though this sounds like a strange, like kooky made up thing, it really works. When you're able to focus on that level and when you're able to keep that tranquility and peace of mind, you're able to feel much more subtle sensations in your body. And so this was interesting because you have to kind of remain objective in order to feel that peace and harmony. Sometimes there's sensations that you don't really like. It might be like a, a jolt of pain or it might just be like a blind spot that's frustrating because you can't feel into it properly. And other times there's sensations that feel really nice. There's like a slight humming or buzzing or like even a like burning fiery sensation sometimes from the heat. And so you have to try and not be attached to those sensations that feel nice and want them. And at the same time, you have to try and not be, distract, uh, be diverted by those sensations that are more kind of, you, don't dis you dislike them, you don't want them there. And what that does is it trains your mind slowly to be at peace with both the things that you like and the things that you don't dislike. And on the fifth day, I started applying this to my back pain. I started to notice that I could feel the pain in my back and not react to it in a way of disliking. I was able to separate my feelings for the back pain from the back pain. I was able to see my back pain as something happening to me, but something that I could detach myself from and not react to. And suddenly I noticed something extremely crazy. The back pain that I was feeling started receding. It started going away. The more I practiced this technique, the more the back pain went away. By the end of the fifth day, I didn't even have to massage my back anymore. I did it one time in the evening just to kind of get rid of those last few muscle knots and see what would happen the next day. But it wasn't necessary anymore. I wasn't changing position as often. I was able to decrease my periods of uh, shifting around in those one hours of determination every time I sat. And it was kind of incredible. And I was sitting at night and um, I just finished my massage and I experienced a massive wave of joy because I realized that what I'd just done was the same thing that I'd done for my arms a few years ago. And what I'd actually done is just escaped that. I could have gone through months of pain again through my back and not known how to work it out, how to fix it, not realized that I was experiencing the same psychosomatic pain that I had in my arms in my back now. And the feeling of joy that that gave me was just totally unparalleled. I started crying. There were no tears coming out of my, my eyes, but I was just like, my whole body was shaking and convulsing with this like sheer joy. And I just started laughing to myself in my room. And um, yeah, it was really great. The next day, day six, I woke up with virtually no pain at all, just some stiffness in my back. The whole day I didn't massage my back, I was able to retain my posture for a lot longer when I was meditating. And now the practice changes again. And well, not so much changes, but you're just encouraged to focus more on those subtler sensations instead of the larger, gross sensations. And what this means is that your mind gets more and more focused. And remember, we've been doing this for five days now, 50 hours roughly. And that's all you're doing. <laughs> every day. You have no one to talk to and there's no other distractions. So your mind starts to become really calm. The way that someone described it to me at the end of the course, which I thought was kind of beautiful, was that he said it was like muddy water, except all the mud had drained to the bottom and all that was left was this crystal clear water. And it described that so perfectly. It described the experience so perfectly. And so on the sixth day, we have this crystal clear mind and we're going through, we're feeling the sensations, we're getting deeper and deeper. Maybe instead of a whole hand, now we can feel the palm, we can feel the fingers. You start to even be able to feel the fingertip. 
and you notice in every place on your body there is a sensation of some sort. And it's connected to you on an unconscious level. And that's what I realized with my back pain, because I was kind of dissolving these spots from large to small, just like I had been dissolving the muscle knots in my back with my toothbrush. And the same thing was happening. They get smaller and smaller and then they just kind of dissolve and feel nice. And this is really remarkable, but this is the technique. This is what the technique does to you. You start to experience some other things as well. And this is where it gets a bit freaky. I can't remember if it was the fifth or the sixth day, but on one of these days, I started to have really intense sexual imagery flashing around in my head, just images one at a time. And it was happening when I was going over certain parts of my body. So I might be focusing on the sensations in my back and see a woman with a naked back turn to me with her hair like over her face. I might be stroking someone's leg and have an image of like a, a bare leg just flash in my mind. And it's just like an image, just a flash, but it was really strange. I couldn't really understand it. And they weren't always sexual as well. There was one time when I was focusing on the, the belly area and I was kind of hunched over because we've been sitting for a while and I could feel the folds in my belly. And I had an image of like a bulldog's face <laughs> flash into my head. There was some sort of connection happening between like subconscious mind bringing to mind how I was feeling or what I was um, understanding on an image level. It was really strange, really weird to describe. And towards the afternoon, I think on the sixth day, I started to get kind of depressed out of nowhere. I didn't know why. And it was such an intense feeling of depression that I had to leave the meditation hall with everyone and go and sit in my room and close the curtain and just be like, man, why am I feeling like this? And I just sat with the feeling for a while, feeling really depressed and um, just like there was a pit in my stomach. So like the kind of depression I hadn't felt for years since I was actually depressed. And as I sat with this feeling and just felt it, I started to get memories come to my mind. And the first one was a relationship when I was younger where I was really attached to this, this girl. I really liked her, um, but she was broken up with me. It was my first proper breakup. And I could see her talking to me and telling me that, well, the things that she found one right between us and the reasons why we'd broken up. And I was feeling everything that I felt when she was telling me at that time. And the memories continued. It was like a series, like a chain of them all linked together. One of them was a couple of weeks later, or a week later, I don't really remember, a Halloween party. And I remember she was dressed in a way that I found really attractive and it was really hard to see her there with like all my friends. And later on in the night, I saw her across the dance floor, like making out with another guy. And it was crushing. And I felt all this. I felt the shame from like the fact we'd just broken up and all my friends are like seeing her and they're all asking me like, I thought you were with Molly. Like, why is she kissing another guy? Um, and yeah, I just relived that experience. It was, it was kind of terrible, but the thing that got me through it was the practice that we've been doing because I was able to now feel, like with my back pain, feel the emotion, but detach myself from it. Feel like the emotion isn't able to override everything. I don't have to react to the emotion. I can just recognize it, see that it's there, accept it, step away from it and watch it happen and know that it will change, it will pass. And so that's what happened. Every memory that came up, I just felt the emotion, accepted it, watched it pass. And there was another one, um, the same series. We were sat on a bed together. And I remember her dad, or maybe her mum, had said to us that we have to leave the door open six inches every time we go up to her room for obvious reasons. 
And I remember this really made me nervous. And so when we were sat on the bed in her room, we just watched the telly. I was too nervous to talk to her because I was worried that her parents were going to be listening to us. I didn't want to touch her or kiss her, even though I wanted to kiss her, because I was worried that her parents were going to like kick me out of the house or something. I was only like a 14, 15 year old kid. And when I was going through and replaying all this stuff, I just realized why was I so hard on myself. I started to be able to forgive myself. You were so young. This was like one of your first proper relationships. Of course you didn't know how to handle these things. Of course you were nervous. You just didn't have the worldly experience. And I started forgiving my younger self. And it's interesting because this isn't something that I've, this isn't an occasion, an event that I've thought about for a long time. But it was all coming up and I was feeling it all again and again and again. And Ella's just come to the door. I think the camera has a 30 minute recording, so she's gonna have to reset it. Help me reset it, Ella. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went through that series of memories and came out the other side and felt really great because it was like I'd just taken them out of me. I just numbed the, not numbed the pain, I'd healed the pain. Maybe if I'd thought of those memories before, um, they would have kind of, I wouldn't have felt good about them. I wouldn't, wouldn't have, still wouldn't have felt good about myself and I wouldn't have gone into them and kind of dug through them and worked it out. That wouldn't have been possible for me. But I did through this course and the opportunities in the course. And it just kept happening. The next day was a really big day for me. And here the technique is pretty much the same. You're scanning up and down, you know, you're trying to make the gross spots become subtle spots. But as well as that, you start to notice you can uh, scan two places at once. So you can scan down your arm, the feelings in your arm, while scanning down the feelings in your other arm. You can scan both your legs at the same time. You can separate your chest into two areas that you scan through. So that's just the next part in the process. And it means you're able to get through more of these like strange sensational knots inside you. And in the afternoon, I had another series of memories come up that were about times when I've been really paranoid or really hurt, really ashamed. And I did the same thing, sat through them, detached myself. But the last one that came up was really horrifying. And the reason I've kind of managed to settle into it now, but the reason why at the start of this, I was feeling super, super anxious because I knew I'd have to talk about it again. It was the worst day of my life. And I'd pushed it so far down in myself that it just never came out. It was just down there, buried in a box somewhere in my mind. It was so bad that day that I promised my ex-girlfriend that we would never talk about it again. We'd never bring it up in conversation because she was equally scarred. It was my 21st birthday. I had got my friends together there were two different friend groups. One of them was my uni friend group, one was my friend group from school. And there was conflict, a little conflict right from the start. People didn't get on, people were judging each other. And it was kind of disappointing because I wanted everyone to get on and I wanted this to be the, the best day of my life, my 21st birthday party, my entrance into adulthood. And I wanted to end with style. And Throughout the day, um, things got worse. Through a substance overdose, I developed a panic attack that lasted for hours and hours and hours, over 10 hours probably. And during that time, I had a series of intense experiences that were really horrible. One time, I literally felt like my heart had exploded. I felt like I blacked out for a second from the explosion that had happened in my heart, from the severity of the panic and anxiety that was coursing through my veins. And I blamed my friend in front of me because my mind just wasn't working properly. I said like, what have you done? What have you done to me? And the feeling of like, not just the crazy high explosion that I was experiencing, 
but also the feeling of having talked to my friend like that just left me reeling and my mind was like so shattered and broken at this point that like any kind of impurity that I was feeling just became so exaggerated. I started feeling all this self-worth, uh, like lack of self-worth and feeling terrible and feeling just bad for my friend and realizing this crazy, horrible situation that I was in. That went on. There were other experiences. Um, I ended up being stuck in a car outside the party because I was unable to drive home with my ex-girlfriend who was experiencing something similar. We were just lying in the car and we led there all night and we led there for hours the next day, just full of panic and anxiety. Like we were gonna die, like we were gonna feel like that forever. Luckily we didn't feel like that forever. But that traumatic experience really stayed with me. It took me months to recover from it and I don't know if I'm able to actually express the the like sheer terror that that day brought to me properly. I stayed up for like 36 hours nonstop. I couldn't sleep. And it was just such a harrowing experience. But <laughs> through this course, even though when it first came, I was just like overrun by anxiety. I started feeling all the same things I did back then. My body went ice cold. I started sweating clammy and sweaty and my heart was just beating out of my chest so fast and all of these overpowering intense sensations I was able to detach myself from and look at objectively and feel like I could be at peace with it. I just understood that I was feeling this way and didn't have to react to it and by doing that I was able to go through each of these memories and talk myself through them just like I had with the girlfriend who broke up with me. I was able to say to myself, like, yeah, you had a substance overdose and your heart felt like it exploded. Of course you were in no state to talk to anyone. It's no surprise that when you talk to your friend like that, you did talk to him as you did. I was able to forgive myself in each of the situations that I went through and I got so much healing out of that process. I didn't realize I'd been carrying this around with me the whole time. Like I said, I buried it so deep. And that night I just cried. But again, for some reason without tears, just cried. But this time with depression, with a hollowness, with a sadness. And I was just able to feel uh, kind of grieving for the 21st birthday party which I wished had been the best day of my life and ended up becoming the worst day of my life and I was able to accept that and move on and now I can talk to you about it I can talk to a camera about it I've told all my friends about it can you imagine like being able to share the worst experience of your life like this candidly with anyone I mean, maybe for some of you that's okay, <laughs> but for me that traumatic experience, it was almost like PTSD whenever I thought of it, it would, I would become super anxious. So being able to overcome that has been massive for me, absolutely massive, it can't be understated and I'm so grateful that I went on this course for that. And I don't understand how it works, I don't understand how going through this process and meditating is able to bring this up and able to give you the skills to deal with it. I think this is the amazing thing. It brings it up for you, but you can only bring it up once you already have the skills to tackle whatever comes. If someone said to you, you wanna go on a course and you'll relive the worst day of your life, then that sounds terrible. Why would you wanna do that? But you're able to relive it and get over it. Now that suddenly that's amazing, it's incredible. And I had a couple more memories come up over the next few days. The technique develops as well. You're able to kind of join sensations together along your, your senses. You're able to go in and out of your body, like to the inside. You could scan from like back to front and get all the inside. And there's more like subtle and gross sensations in there that you can dissolve. And yeah, more stuff comes out. Um, just as another example, one of them was the day that my mum told me that our cats had been run over, or one of them had been run over. I was quite young and um, 
I, I didn't realize that it had affected me, but the, the thing that really bothered me wasn't the fact that our cats were gone. It was the fact that my mom was like so devastated by this. She'd spent months with these cats, they were wild. She'd like brought them in and looked after them. And it took her so long to get them to come around and she was able to stroke them both in the end. And like, she got so much energy and joy out of that. And I knew how much she loved these cats. And so as soon as I heard that and I saw like the, the, what she was feeling on her face, even though she was trying to be strong, I just like, I felt everything she was feeling. And I felt all this again when the memory came up. Just a series of healing events that happened and totally incredible. The last day you are able to cut your silence and you can start speaking to people again. And this is a weird experience after you've not been talking to anyone for 10 days. And other people started telling me the stories of what they'd experienced and what happened to them. One of the guys was still segregated, so I didn't hear any of the girls' stories, but one of the other guys, he told me when he first came to the course, he's Indonesian, he took a ferry from Borneo down to Bali. It took him four days to travel from his home to Bali because it was the only way he could do it. It was the cheapest option. He did this because he'd read a book about this technique and he had a problem where his body was bent over. He was hunched like this. And through the technique, he was able to find a strip of like muscle sensation here that when he broke it down, he was able to write himself. His posture was able to write itself. And not only that, but this guy was completely suicidal before he went to the course. And through the process of being able to move this in and out, he noticed that when he locked himself down and was in his like hunched position that he was just used to, that was just his life, waves and waves of suicidal thoughts and depression came to him. When he was able to lock, unlock himself and say upright, it all disappeared. It all went away. His depression miraculously disappeared. Not only that, he had a kind of OCD thing where he would rub his arms like this and get the dirt from his arms and he would either throw it away or he said he would eat it. He managed to solve that too. He stopped doing this, he stopped eating it through the course. That was the first time he did the course. When I met him, it was actually his second time doing the course. And this time he managed to solve just nail biting. He used to bite his nails all the time and he got over that. Another guy, um, he was on an imminent breakup with his girlfriend and they'd been together for seven years, they had a son. And so the idea of him breaking up and losing that was unbearable for him. In his words, he felt like he was gonna die all of the time. Through the course, he was able to maintain, uh, like ascertain, no, like gain some peace in the situation. He managed to get to a point of calm where his stress was no longer affecting his relationship with his like, girlfriend and their relationship started to come together. I'd also spoken to him on his second course. This was his first course. By the time his second course came around, they were almost living together again. They were living together like a couple of days a week, slowly coming back together. And he was at total harmony with his situation. There was not a single shred of stress in his body anymore. Another guy, um, kind of miraculous story. So he'd been doing this for 20 years and um, he was someone who had a lot of anger, a lot of pent up anger that he would just vent left, right and center. And this had come out for him in an estrangement with his father. He wasn't talking to his father. Through years of the practice, I think it took him two or three years. So he went to the course and then just practiced the meditation outside of it. I think he went to like three courses. But through the process of like learning and building and growing, he got over his anger and he got to a place where he could understand why the hell am I treating my dad like this? Why am I not talking to him? I'm such an idiot. 
He just came to this realization one day through the practice to the point where he went and spoke to his dad again. He mended those bonds that had been shattered and broken. And not only that, he was able to sit with his dad in his dying weeks. He helped him with his medicine. And on his deathbed, he was the last one to give him morphine to re reduce his pain. Um, and he sat with him and he said he watched the breath go out of his body. And without that experience, he said he realized his dad might have died alone or at least not in the company of a, a loved one. And he was so grateful that he was able to speak to his dad and mend the bonds to the point where that was possible. There are more crazy experiences, but this film is already going to be so long, so I should probably just try and and wrap it all up for you. The meditation center I went to was in Bali. There are meditation centers like this all over the world. The technique is called Vipassana. Um, I don't know how it works, like I said before, but I would recommend it to anyone who is suffering something that they want to get over. The waiting times are usually quite long for the course. I had to wait for three months to do it. I didn't actually know what I was getting myself into when I did the course. I had no idea. I thought I was going to be following my breath for 10 days and I thought I'd come out of it maybe with like a renewed sense of, or like an improved sense of focus. And I have, but I've also come out of this ability to identify the senses on my body all of the time. And now that I'm outside of the meditation center, I have so much more awareness than I did before. If you guys have noticed, I've managed to talk to the camera now. I don't know how long it's been, but the whole time without stopping, it's because my mind is so clear. I don't have any doubts about myself, about what I'm going to say. I don't have any anxieties, like trying to plan what I'm going to say later on or this and that. And I really wanted to make the film like this because I was able to do the same thing when I was telling my friends before. And this is something that I've always struggled with. You probably can't really get the sense for it um, when you're watching our films because we plan stuff and we can do multiple takes and so we can edit things together and make it seem like me and Ella are talking really fluently. But sometimes it's not always like that. Sometimes I, I stumble, I can't get my sentences out. I'm not someone that's usually able to talk with any eloquence or fluidity. That's just not me, that's not who I identify with. And yet, here I am now, able to do this. That alone is a skill that is giving me like phenomenal satisfaction, and I'm really glad that I have that. So that's one thing that's come out of it for me as well. Um, but also, this awareness seeps into every part of your life. You start to notice moments when you're reacting to things that you are now able to undo or fix or change. And on every level of life, it comes up again. So I've set myself a challenge. I want to keep doing this practice every day for three hours. And I'm going to record the whole process for 30 days. And I will try and relate to you some more of the stuff that's going to happen. I'm sure there will be more things that happen. I obviously won't be able to get to the same level of concentration that we were on on the course with all our distractions removed. You know, we didn't have to cook for ourselves. That was all done for us. And we had people helping us every step of the way, the silence and the segregation, like just no distractions. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the depths that I was before, but I'm sure I'm going to be able to get something out of it in everyday life. And I hope I'm able to maintain this fluidity of mind and thought. And I know I had to share this with you guys because if there's one person I can help by doing this, it's worth it. I honestly feel like this is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I did not expect that. See you guys next time. And may you all find true happiness. May the misery in your life recede. May you keep getting better and better every day. And may you feel love.